Morning everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. At least it's morning at the time of this filming. Coming in just a little over 10,700 pounds. An absolutely stunning 330 RSTS Jayco Eagle here at Halet RV. And this thing is, it's like if what you're looking for are big, high-end, high-class fifth wheel features and conveniences, but you don't want a fifth wheel. You don't want the extra stairs to go up and down. Uh, this, this this is a really solid option. It's my personal belief. I don't feel that there is a travel trailer that is quote higher end than an Eagle like this right now. They are just they're they're just so extra in in so so many ways. Um, you've got things like you've got the big fifth wheel ceilings. You've got big fifth wheel slides and appliances. You've got those hot cold temperature ratings, the dual air conditioners, automatic leveling for stability. And that's another interesting thing. This thing is, is very large. It's not the tend of trailer a lot of people, not the tend of trailer, not the kind of trailer a lot of people tend to tow with frequency. But if what you're looking for is a primarily destination use model, but you don't want to get a destination trailer, that is yet another area where this thing really reigns supreme. It, it's gorgeous and I can't wait for you to see the whole thing in greater detail. Now these are perfectly towable, and just like the Eagle fifth wheels, you have those Goodyear tires, you have the Moride suspension treatment system, you got that four star uh, ride and handling package. There's nothing that says you can't take this down the road, but logically in my head, if that was your primary purpose, a fifth wheel does kind of make more sense, just the way that fifth wheels ride a little bit more nicely than a travel trailer. This is something I think is used primarily for park usage, but maybe you plan to tow it every now and then. So the suspension system and the auto leveling kind of come into play where it's in a true destination trailer. Those things don't really matter as much. You know, they definitely do here. Now there's some exceptional things going on here. Like the fact this has an uh, incredibly uncommonly tall ceiling. Eagle travel trailers. Uh, well, an Eagle HT is seven foot tall. This is seven foot three in here. And that allows them to do the same six and a half foot tall walk-in slides uh, by the dining area. And that allows them to use the same bigger uh, like kitchen appliances like that big four-door refrigerator upgrade that we've put into this one right here. So uh, that is yet another reason that I call this a true flat deck fifth wheel. In the RV industry, it's very common when a trailer and a fifth wheel share a name, typically... The trailer isn't quite up to par with the fifth wheel, but that will not be true here. For instance, and here's a more recent 2021 update in the uh, updated generation, the uh, air conditioning system. Eagles have had dual, well, they, they had a standard 15,000 BTU air that's whisper ducted in the living room. Then they had an optional non-whisper ducted air in the bedroom. Full Eagles, whether it's a fifth wheel or a trailer, are now standard 30,000 BTU dual whisper ducted. So also whisper ducted in the bedroom, standard. You no longer have to upgrade and it is now whisper ducted, which it never was before. So once again, best generation of Jayco's yet. Now all the normal features you expect to find like the electric space heating fireplace are still here. And if you don't care about the heat from that, like if you're like, man, I live where it's hot, you can still turn it on for a cool visual effect, which is nice. I've seen a lot of brands swapping over to some JBL sound systems. It's nice to see some more household names getting into the RV industry. You can see how that TV can pivot around for easy viewing. It can also pivot the other way. So if what you're looking for is uh, a little more of a like conversation corner. If you want the TV pointed back toward the sofa, but still visible from that uh, cinema seating directly across from it at that beautiful no neck wrecker uh, viewing angle right there, you can do so. Now, speaking of the sofa back here, this is an incredibly good guest setup space. Because not only is that a trifold sleeper sofa, so not just kiddo guests, not just the grandkids. If you have adult friends or grown children, you know, adult children who want to join you, you can. Now you see those little green lights peering at us like the little evil creatures in the woods in a Snow White fairy tale. Well, they're actually pretty friendly because they're dual USB plugs and household outlets below sealed edge countertop. So if you set a drink there, you happen to spill it, obviously you want to clean the drink up, but it's not really going to damage the countertop any. Now, all of the windows have these nice blackout shades, and they're all fully framed out, which I think really gives those shade strings something to bite into. And since I've seen brands doing that, well, the brands that do it, like Jayco, 
I don't tend to see shade issues from them. Now those side stands with the power outlets we talked about are on both sides of that sofa and that's one of the other reasons this is really good for grown-up guests is a CPAP friendly sleeper sofa which is pretty cool. Now one of the things I noticed when we have done some family camping trips is when we're all piled into one RV whether it's we're camping together or if it's a rainy day Man, we eat up the USB plugs, and having those extra plugs everywhere is handy. But are you noticing, too, that you can still access uh, the full recline function on one of the cinema seats over here? And that is actually really handy, because uh, when we went family camping last time, my wife and I were on the hide bed and my daughter slept on the theater seat right there and got along just fine. And that's probably because she's only 10, and her bones are still bandy. And whereas, you know, adults like us... If I slept like that all night, I would wake up and I wouldn't even be able to turn my head left. Like every time I tried to merge into traffic, I wouldn't be able to see. I'd just be like, all right, Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> now, I'm most certainly not condoning be, uh, driving when you can't turn your head left. Just throwing that out there. All the windows open for airflow. I think I mentioned that, but I've got a couple of shades drawn. I just do want to mention even those sofa side windows open for air. And speaking of windows, how about from the rear to the front, basically panoramic door side viewing. And this, I think, is very, very valuable on models like this. They are expected to be used for an extended time, like maybe at a destination, even a full viewing window in the entry door right there. Because if you're only going to be at one place temporarily, the windows over here don't matter as much because you're probably out and about enjoying the sights, sounds, and smells especially if you're a dog, of the uh, local camp area and our, our region, as it were. Whereas in something like this, you're setting up shop. This is a home away from home. You want those windows over here so you can look around. That's a big item for me. Now, you might have already keyed into one of the more, I think, impacting uh, late 21 updates. And that is the switch from carpeted to carpetless slide outs. So that folks understand... That is no small thing. And I don't just mean from an ease of keeping the RV clean. You can't just take a carpeted slide and swap out the carpet. It screws up the engineering of the slide out. You'll, you can screw up the motor doing it because they're kind of engineered to glide on the carpet a little bit. So this took serious work. That is why when like, uh, if you're watching a lot of my videos, you go, why do they still have carpet in the slides? Because it's hard. But Jayco isn't ever trying to be just okay. They're always trying to be better or best. Now, along that note, as we go through the video, you are going to ask, probably, why do they have heat vents in the floor? Isn't that stupid? Well, there's a reason for it. Heat vents in the floor are vastly more effective at actually heating the RV than cabinet ducted heating. And since Eagle is uh, warranted for full-time RVing for that unparalleled two plus three year warranty period, and they are hot, cold camp rated, tested, proven, and published, the floor vents make more sense here. Now, Jayco makes different brands. If you're looking for something with no heat vents in the floor, they make those too. But for a big, potential cold camp rated rig like this, that is something that they need. Now, over here, it is primarily a couples camper. We've talked about some guest capacity, and that is yet another area where this is very capable. Because you see just a, you know, a little couples dining arrangement. This has a little, if we take a look, two plus two dining scenario, where it has a table extension as well as two fold-away guest chairs, and they still very neatly under the front bed. Or you could put them in the pass-through up front if you're really not planning on using them whatsoever. Now, seven and foot three ceilings really, I mean really, make a massive difference here in the uh, kitchen space. Because, with again, with that taller ceiling, we've got a taller slide. If we have a taller slide, that means that we have more space for more storage. But even if we're not in the slide out, you'll see that this whole thing just opens right up. Now, what's kind of nice here is this thing gives us just immense pantry space, far more than you commonly expect out of a normal travel trailer. But I think we've established there's very little normal about this travel trailer. And of course, like a North Point, we've got the pocket screwed cabinets, the uh, nice, you know, kind of hidden hinges. At least they were hidden until we exposed them. <laughs> now over here in this rear corner, that is, uh, I'm going to call it kind of the coffee bar. You've got household USB plugs back there. You've got your own dedicated lighting. So if you want to wake up in the morning, see what you're doing without uh, like flipping on all of the lights, you can do that. Real kind of smart feature right there. Now over here, this is overflow pantry space or a closet. 
And it's done by what's known as, at, at Jayco at least, the Mervin Shelf. Named after the individual who uh, kind of pioneered the idea. And it's funny how sometimes a simple magnet and an inexpensive hinge can really do a heck of a job. Look at how it, it just simply but immediately transforms that entire space from either an XL pantry for big tall things like extra large, you know, family size cereal boxes or whatever. Uh, to, you know, having a coat closet right by the door, but behind doors, hidden away from view, so everyone's not looking at your clothes and stuff. I love this full extension drawer over here uh, below the coffee bar. It gives you a handy place to put a lot of your uh, various items, or you can almost use it like a, uh, for more full-timer uh, seasonal people, like sort of the um, general kitchen junk drawer is when I look at that, I think, oh, that's that place. That's that going to be that catch-all drawer right there, and down below. Those shelves go all the way back to the wall behind. Now, when you go with the gas electric fridge, you're actually going to gain an extra drawer below the refrigerator. Jayco's very good about not wasting space like that. And absolutely, guys, there are different refrigerators with different advantages. And we have been known to build this floor plan both ways, but we've kind of found the best surface records, surface, I'm sorry, service records, there we go, out of the uh, two-way gas electric fridge. Not to mention, there are still some people who like, hey, look, I'm looking for this big eagle, and I'm not going to be park camping. I'm looking to go off grid. I'm going to throw some solar on it. I want a fridge that's going to be uh, not quite a power hog, and that's where this one really comes into play. Now, just like under the refrigerator, they're very good about maximizing potential drawer space. Then right next to that, you got four drawers down to the floor beside that larger 22-inch oven. Now, inside that little kitchen alcove, you can see some easy-reach household outlets. And you see that little black panel against the wall. That talks to the BM Pro system that is kind of the master control center of this RV in the same way that my wife is the master control center of our household. Uh, love you, babe. Um, <laughs> anyway... Each of those panels, you'll find different copies of those panels throughout the entire RV. They do different things in different areas, so they're context sensitive. And you'll see more of that, especially obvious when we go into the bedroom where there's two of them next to each other that do very different things. Next to the microwave, little nook of uh, cabinet space. They just didn't want to waste it, but this over here. As if we didn't already have enough pantry space, you still have a dedicated pantry here. So like, if you do choose to use the Mervin shelf in coat closet mode, go-go gadget coat closet kind of mode, <laughs> I love Inspector Gadget as a kid. Although I'll tell you guys, word, word to the wise, don't ever go back as an adult and watch some of your favorite kid shows. It rarely is, is worth it. The memory is better than the actual experience as an adult. Just take that from your Uncle Josh here, V nerd. Um, but what's nice here, is these shelves are totally adjustable, not just removable, but you know, like every half inch you can notch them around and check out that motion lighting. So if you're like me and you want to sneak over here and get a little late night snack, which is part of the reason I've put on so many pandemic pounds that I, man, I, I got to really start focusing on that and doing something about it. I keep talking about it, but obviously it hasn't bothered me enough to do anything about it. That motion light's going to be handy. Now, behind the entertainment, you also have a little bit of pantry tainment storage. And if you're noticing... This is a very expandable entertainment center. Back behind here, you've got all kinds of household outlets. Now, see how those are open and unused. You've also got an unused outlet above that. So there's three open plugs in here. Not to mention the fact that Jayco is actually running HDMI wiring. That's what's located up here. So they're not just HD capable. They're running the wiring for you. And it's not that you couldn't do that after the fact. But do you really want to have to order that HDMI cable off Amazon and then try fishing it through the entertainment center and you know like when you have to shove your hand into the pickle jar and you have to do the the the, the pickle claw to try to get in there do you really want to do that in your camper because i know i don't well jaco does all the work for you so that you don't have to and it's those little hidden behind the scenes things it's it's the jaco advantage it's those little extras that they do and i suppose it does bear an honorable mention. We do have that cabinet space above the sofa here. Historically, I've always done a very poor job of displaying that. And I think that every ounce counts when it comes to storage. And I don't want to overlook anything. Like Steven Tyler. I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> and yet, despite all the yakety yakking I've done, we still got to look at that island. So let's start here. You might have noticed how all the countertops are nice solid surface here in these Eagles. And we've pointed out a few of them, but you know, power outlets anywhere, it really makes sense. And they're, 
They're not in like an area where water is going to cause an issue. Like you got some down here below the countertop line, back in the coffee bar, over by the oven, but they're always easy to reach. You've got the pop-up power tower built right on the island top. We'll get a better look at that in just a second. High-rise sprayer faucet above a stainless sink with a uh, uh, cutting board cover and dish drying rack. And then you got this little guy. This is uh, the Jayco exclusive drinking water system. And basically this RV has its own huge fresh tank. I mean, the water holding capacities on this, by the way, are just astronomical. They're awesome. They're absolutely awesome. But completely separate from all of the fresh water stuff. You see that basically like Culligan jug down there? This RV has its own separate 12 volt pump and that jug right there. And the idea is instead of lugging along tons of bottled water, which eats up a lot of cargo space, you can just have one or two jugs that are easy to hot swap and you can fill the other one up while that one's being used. And uh, you always have fresh water on tap. Not to mention the space here, obviously for wastebaskets since they include one. Places down here for things like your, you know, baking sheets for cookies and biscuits. And an extra little drawer right here on the island because, you know, at this point, why not? They've just, they've really really dressed it up here. Now, moving on, I've talked about a couple of these little control pads. We talked about one in the kitchen, whereas like this one over here by the dining area, this one's different from the kitchen. The kitchen can turn on kitchen lights and things. This one can turn on the dining lights, all ceiling lights, or all outside lights because this is an exterior viewing place, basically like a perch. <laughs> so if someone's knocking on the door, you can flip on the lights and they're looking at lights and you're looking out of tinted windows where they can't see and you can be like, who is this joker knocking on my door? Anyway, <laughs> roof solar ready. We'll get up on the roof and see that in a little bit. Jayco does offer solar packages as well. And here at Haywood RV, we can build you just about anything solar you're looking for. Now, the BM Pro system is great. It's basically a fancy pants Android tablet with a specialty system loaded onto it. But it works so nicely. Here's my favorite part about it. When the screen is off, or if you just turn the power back on the RV, you don't have to wait for all this to boot up. You can just go boop, boop, turn the lights on and off whenever you want. You've got separate living room and uh, like bedroom light switches. Uh, you can do all this off your phone if you want. You can control your climate controls. If the uh, Eagle is auto leveling equipped, you can control the auto leveling even from here. It basically only does everything. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And sometimes folks go, what is this? This is an access point to the uh, uh, things behind the shower, basically. Now, I purposely started with the bathroom lights off so I can kind of cycle through a lot of the lighting here. And I never remember which switch does which, so hold on. Okay, so that's our backlit morning mirror right there. So if you wake up like me and you're a bit of a zombie, you've got that thing. You've also got a night light above the shower up here. So if you want to just kind of have that running to see where you're going when you get in at night, you can do that. And then, of course, you have full-on bright lights. But in addition, up top here, Eagle uses a different kind of bathroom vent fan. It's a max air vent fan that does not require the lid to be like flipped open or you don't have to crank it up and down. There's just a little latch, you flip it open or closed and you make sure the rain stays out, but you can, you know, have the airflow going whenever you want. Now, additionally, if we open everything up, you can see that this thing has pretty good storage for uh, a bathroom space like this. I like how they have a medicine cabinet and the extra cabinet beside it. Good countertop space here and you can see uh, shelf space and drawer space all right here in this bathroom. But that is a sealed edge thermal foil counter here too. Uh, next to that, by the way, you do have a uh, porcelain foot flush stool and you've got plenty of leg room in this thing. And with a seven foot three ceiling, you are not going to have headroom issues in one of these eagles. As you can see, if I stand in there and take a goofy picture of myself, there's more than enough headroom. Now the bedroom here, it, they very well could have. They could have just focused on the living room, ignored the bedroom, and just made it okay, but the, everything in the bedroom is over the top. So this is a standard queen bed model, but we have outfitted this with the 70 by 80 king upgrade because it is really built with the idea that you're probably putting a king into this, so they leave room to still walk around the bed. I see that you've got outlets and they are outlets on both sides of the bed that are very easy to access. Big breeze windows and with that super tall ceiling, they can have a taller slide out here than a fifth wheel bedroom typically could ever dream of having. So zero head knocker issues. 
And again, another uh, mention of a late 21 update uh, that came into the Eagle family. I was, I've been pushing this for a while and I'm really glad Jayco made it happen. Cause just like the carpetless slide flooring, it requires more engineering time than you would think. And that is the, the now standard dual 15,000 BTU air conditioners that are now whisper ducted because the bedroom air in this, even if optioned, was never whisper ducted before. And that is something I know a lot of people are going to be happy about. I know there've been just tons of requests for it. And this front closet is amazing. It is deep. There's so much hanging space here. If you notice, you've actually got one, two, three hanging segments and behind all of it, you have like dresser shelving. So everything in here is kind of forming two purposes including the two extra drawers here. Now it's super deep for an important reason. This is where your washer dryer prep is located. It is not however set up for a stackable. It is however set up for side by side washer dryer setups. So if you want to use just a combo washer dryer, you'd install it in a space like over here. If you want to do a separate washer and dryer, you'd put one on the left right here and one on the right that we already saw. That's why those doors are slatted and the middle doors are mirrored. So they all kind of serve a little bit different purpose here, but if what you're looking for is that big time, long-term use stay in storage, Eagle provides. And finally, we've got that full storage below the bed. You see it is plywood decked, nice heavy duty, long lasting construction with double struts for easy lift. Even with the two chairs down here for the dining table stacked on top of one another, you could still put more cargo above. This is a huge, huge chunk of storage space. Now that little blue coily hose you see, you could use that for like the outside shower. Then of course, directly across from that, we have our very conventional bedroom dresser space that is all still sealed edge uh, membrane countertop above that though. Now, naturally, a nice viewing window straight across from the bed for some good uh, breezes coming across the head uh, headboard area like dual breeze windows there. TV hookups and, again, whisper ducted air. Really, uh, you know, another thing, speaking of the air conditioning, let me, let me mention this here. Nice thing Jayco does, not every brand does this. Every single air vent in any Jayco centralized air system can be closed and turned individually. That is an extra little thing. It's not specific to Jayco. Plenty of other brands do it, but plenty of other brands also don't do it. I love to have cold air blowing straight on me. My wife don't like it. So this really gives us the ability to each be comfortable in our own little way. But different air conditioner systems, some can't do that. It costs a little more to have an air system that can do that, but that's Jayco doing Jayco things. And so it's extra details that we like to show you here at Halid RV. Now transitioning real quick to seeing this with the slides closed. I like to do this so that you can see this bedroom door can open and close unimpeded. Um, in the past, I haven't done a good job of showing bedrooms with slides closed, and there's quite a few times where I've found that bed when retracted, especially with a wider king bed, it's gonna interfere with the door, but you don't see that here. Now, you know, at the same time, it's not necessarily the biggest inconvenience because especially if you have the BM Pro hooked up to your phone, you can very easily just nudge the slide open a little bit, nudge it closed, you're gonna be good to go. Now, uh, Eagle does a lot of good things, and something they're very sensitive to is trying to provide as much refrigerator access with the doors closed as possible. And that is one of the other areas where this fridge freezer kind of works very well for this floor plan. Because as you can see, you can clearly get through the entire freezer. There's just no questions about that. So the question becomes the fridge. Obviously, you can get to this half of it, but with the way they've done that slight cutaway on the countertop over here, you can also crack this enough that frankly, I think you can get to pretty much everything you need in here. It might be a little tricky to reach around the door, but usually you don't have anything much bigger than salad dressing in the door, so you're probably gonna be okay. Um, if you really had to, you could lean over and get to the sink and the dining table over here Although it is a little bit small to try to squeeze two people in there. If you do need to set like one person down to have a bite to eat or something, you could. I'm one of these people, half the time I stand at the kitchen counter and eat my lunch anyway. I don't know why I do it. It's annoying to me. I know it annoys my wife, but I do that. Do you, you guys, well, oh, this is a loaded question. I was just about to say, do you guys have any things in your marriages that <laughs> annoy your partners for no apparent reason? But I think we should probably skip over that one because that is an entirely different story for an entirely different day. Now down below that big front closet, we have this huge full pass-through and this is 
Again, another feature that is eerily reminiscent of a fifth wheel, having a larger front storage compartment. Normal Eagle things like motion sense lights on both sides, a little tire pressure gauge just to make sure your uh, good years are good to go when you, you know, depart. Now that is yet another USB hub, which uh, uh, is also a charging mount for a Furion lit Bluetooth speaker. But basically, most folks are probably going to use that as a USB hub. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to be fair here. If I'm going to get ultra picky, and I mean, I got to get ultra picky on this one. It is pretty dialed in. I would like to see that battery disconnect mounted up a little higher. So it's a little bit out of the way of shifting cargo. But considering... This is a model that spends most of its time at a destination and not a lot of time being towed, typically. I mean, I mean, obviously usage can vary, but that is really more the intention of a big RV like this, a big trailer. Uh, I don't know that I can, uh, it's not that big of a knock, I guess I would say. Uh, Eagle does use the nice zero G stable steps that won't fall on your head and crush your dog or throw out your rotator cuff. They're also using the newer easy adjust variety of which I am just a super fan. You don't have the, uh, the pull pins to adjust these legs anymore. It kind of works almost drawbridge style. You can extend the legs very easily. And then when you need to retract them, you just push in on that silver tab and uh, you know, in, uh, basically push the leg back in to retract it. It's about as easy as it gets. Now again, just like a fifth wheel, we've got a quad step. Easy come and go. You don't have to have big long legged, you know, mountain climber legs like mine to get up and down this thing. And you see that extra large handle for easy coming and going there next to that anti-slam door that does have the full window. Now also as a backup, you see a slide, uh, I'm sorry, you see an awning on the face of the slide, not a slide on the face of the awning. That is actually a site uh, for which I would like to see. So this is a dual awning model. That big door side slide with all those windows is awesome, but it can eat into our awning space. So Jacob said, eh, no sweat. I'll just put a second awning on this thing and now everybody wins. And even here on the shaded side of the RV, does that not just look phenomenal the curb appeal on these is just next level right now they've really taken it above and beyond the nose cap has these like glow beam lightsaber lights on the front and they're orange which is dot regulated in case you happen to leave them on you know when you're going down the road now our auto leveling controls are kind of cool you can actually control that all right up here on the tongue jack and it's it's so seamless how it's integrated it makes sense but for a long long time auto leveling controls in trailers were available only inside the rv having this stuff out here where you know you would logically be pushing the buttons on the tongue jack to work things very handy 30 pound tanks instead of 20s uh, i i would like to say normal on big trailers like this but it's shocking how many big trailers are only using 20 pound tanks uh and this tray up front this is something special if you just want a whole slew of batteries. If you want a big battery array and you want to go solar crazy, you can. Notice how there's kind of a slot in here if you want to do something like put a generator on the front. There's a lot of different ways you could use that. You could put a cargo box in, uh, you know, you could just, your uh, wheel chocks, you could have a little box for those. There's all kinds of different ways you could utilize that. It's just that kind of attention to detail and thought process that goes into these that really makes me appreciate them. Now, uh, one thing that is kind of unparalleled here is Jayco's warranty. There is nobody making a trailer remotely similar to this that has a better warranty. Um, some brands have this three-year structural thing, and Jayco's really always had the best factory warranty with two years of coverage instead of one. But that three-year structural thing confused some people. So Jayco said, fine, forget it. We're not going to fight it. We're going to have a two plus three warranty. So we do everything they do, and we still do twice as much factory coverage as anybody else building something like this. There's just no question about it. They have the most peace of mind assurance and guarantees. Now, if you're looking at the top of the slides, you can see some little kind of boxy things looking at us. These are slide awning ready. And that's an interesting thing is we've been able to add slide awnings to a lot of things for a lot of years, but it's always been a little tricky because there always needed to be enough structure in the slide face itself to attach them. And now there's no question. You can look at this and go, yes, this has that. Um, the enclosed docking station here is a, another very fifth wheel feature here in a travel trailer. And once again, if what you're looking for, and keep in mind their two plus three warranty, another area it's unmatched, it is a full time RV warranted uh, warranty. So this has the exact same full timers coverage as something like a North Point or a Pinnacle from Jayco. Uh, Jayco has more 
full-time warranted RVs than any other manufacturer at this stage. Now these are, uh, this is auto leveling that we're looking at here. A big trailer like this, it does add some excellent stability and frankly, you know, you probably don't want to go monkeying around with uh, trying to manually level a big trailer like this a whole heck of a lot. And these systems have become so much more advanced. They're far more functional, far more reliable uh, than they used to be. So they've really earned our confidence and we feel that it's, it's really appropriate to outfit those onto something this size now. Now you'll see this RV outfitted with backup camera prep. But you also see right there that it has side view camera prep. And that goes hand in hand with the J-Smart lighting. But real quick while I'm standing right here, I don't want to forget this. Under the headboard area of the bed, there is this handy storage pocket. Let me get you in there once the camera adjusts a little bit. And there you go. So the J-Smart lighting. If you're not familiar with it, it stands for signals, markers, and reverse travel. What that means is... Normal RVs, normal travel trailers and fifth wheels, if you flip on your left hand turn signal, only that left hand uh, uh, tail light will blink. On any Jayco outfitted with the J Smart lighting, if you did the same thing and flipped on the left hand turn signal, every light along this side of the RV is going to blink with it. So the uh, reason that I'm talking about this in conjunction with the turn signal or the uh, uh, side view camera prep is usually those cameras derive their power from the marker lights directly. They basically just piggyback off of it. So the question begs, if I flip on my turn signal, am I negating the ability to use my side view camera? And the answer is no. Jayco ran separate power lines for each of those devices. So they've thought ahead. They did it right the first time to make sure you're not going to have to have to deal with any issues. Ladder on the back will get us up to the roof. We'll hop up there in a little bit. If you look at the tail lights, we're kind of far away. You got to look a little close. You see a white element in the center of them. That is the RT of the smart lighting, the reverse travel. So if you are backing up, you can see where you're going, which is obviously a handy thing. Now, Eagles go a little bit further above the backup camera prep. They have this big light white bar, and that will cast even more light back there. If we're looking down below, you can see a 300 pound rated accessory hitch installed from the factory. So that if you do want to do things like add a bike rack or stuff like that, you can do so without voiding your warranty. Also down here is a gas grill quick connect. So if you want to go black stoning or just general camp grilling, you can do so. And I like how it's back here. It's, you know, not going to be uh, pumping heat and smoke and everything else across the campsite. Uh, it's, you know, out of the way. And a lot of times when I'm cooking, when I'm grilling, I don't know. I kind of don't want to be right up next to the road. I feel like... You're cooking something that smells good. You tend to attract a lot of attention. I don't know. I don't want that. I just want to be back here doing my own private thing. Maybe that's just me. Am I weird? I, uh, okay. That's not fair. I'm weird. Yeah, but never mind. <laughs> All sorts of campside windows. We talked about them inside, but I always feel like they bear repeating. I love being able to see my site, especially on a model like this, that I think um, as compared to a lot of travel trailers, which are really made for, well, as the name implies, traveling, this one is somewhere between a travel trailer a fifth wheel and a destination trailer and spending a lot of time in one place whether it's seasonal or permanent even i like being able to look out onto the campsite of my rv and not looking at the neighbors and this accomplishes that so so well and even on the roof of an eagle we've got a lot to cover like you can clearly see the two air conditioners they're both 15,000 btu airs again that's kind of another fifth wheel kind of feature that you'll find here in this travel trailer and that's why I keep referring to this as a flat deck fifth wheel it's really as close I mean in in every regard with the exception of the fact that it obviously doesn't gooseneck up in the front it's got more in common with a fifth wheel than a common travel trailer like the uh, Weingart Air 360 antenna system here, which does have an uplink available if you want to upgrade to some sort of like Wi-Fi LTE connection point. You'll see the Eagles are always really heavy handed with their sealants. Um, Eagles been doing roof solar prep longer than, well, oh, geez, just about anybody in this class. They were doing it before a lot of fifth wheels, even here on their travel trailers. They were doing that on Whitehawks on, in, from Jayco as well, which is kind of just like a junior eagle, really. They're very similar in most regards. This is a better look at the, the different kind of fan that they were using there in the bathroom. Remember, you don't need to crank it up and down. You don't need to uh, worry about rainy day stuff getting in. If it's Monsoon torrent season, you're just going to close little vents on the inside and you're going to be good to go. It's just one less thing you got to worry about, you know. Uh, what else is nice here is the fact that unlike nearly anything else out there, you're walking on plywood. 
and that's very uncommon. Uh, even a lot of uh, big luxury fifth wheels with full-time RV ratings, they usually still have an OSB roof deck, which is fine. There's absolutely nothing with it. OSB actually does carry some of its own unique set of advantages. Plywood, though, does carry a heavier roof load rating. It is a stronger material as compared to most of the OSB that you're going to find in the RV industry. Um, there's different grades of material, so not OSB is all the same, not all plywood is the same, but this is better than the OSB you tend to find in the roofing of RVs. And that is one of the main factors in Jayco's Magnum Truss roofing system. It's what gives them the heaviest roof load rating within their class. And essentially what that means, if the roof is stronger, it, it's kind of like where the final stress point in the RV is if you are towing it. Not to mention, like here in the Midwest, we get a ton of snow. And I know some places get far more snow than we do, for sure. Uh, Michigan gets all four seasons. They get them in equal quantities here. We never get the massive extremes most places get, but we get about 90% of anything. So it's just, some, you know, we're very aware of the seasonality of different RVs. And uh, Eagles are one of those RVs that can really stand up to just about anything. Like the roof is thicker. There's more insulation in there and a radiant barrier. They're not just doing one or the other. You know, everything they do here is designed to keep this thing comfortable in the summer and warmer in the winter. Now understand, if it is a wicked polar vortex like we've had a couple times, there's really no RV guaranteed to withstand that. But short of that, Eagle is a brand that's proven to get it done. If that sounds good to you, give us a call here at my family-owned and operated outfit. I am an SOB with a PhD, son of the boss whose parent had a dealership. <laughs> And if that sounds good to you, sounds good to us. We do hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet Camping, everyone.